The Arthur Ryler Institute undertakes a diverse range of research into biodiversity, both at the species and community level. This research is designed to generate knowledge that can be used to inform decision making and government policy. In this example, the Waterbirds and Wetlands team are surveying birds in the north arm of Western Port in Victoria. We had four teams of two, each expert in bird identification and counting. Two of these teams worked from the shore and two from boats, and each covered a designated area. We conducted counts at high tide and low tide, twice in summer and twice in winter. Within each count, we identified each species of bird and counted their numbers within each survey area. We also recorded the habitat that they were using and identified any key resources, such as important feeding areas or high tide roosts. These are cormorants, pied cormorants, little pied cormorants and little black cormorants are the common ones in Western Port Bay. They're all specialised hunters of fish, they uh, swim underwater to catch them. It helps them to swim underwater if their plumage absorbs some water, so they can stay underwater without using so much energy, but it does mean that they get cold, so they sometimes need to come up to perches and dry out a bit, especially they need to dry out their wing feathers. They've benefited from uh, human developments around the coastline probably because we put up all these navigational aids which means that cormorants can now perch on them when they're drying off and they can therefore forage in water far from shore that they would have been unable to use before. This is Boralia Island, it's a famous place for bird watchers. This end of Boralia Island, this is where the pied oyster catchers are hanging out. These are Australian breeding shorebirds, not very numerous, there's uh, perhaps 10,000 to 20,000 pied oyster catchers in the world. The good news with pied oyster catchers is that their numbers are increasing. Most migratory shorebirds are going downhill, but pied oyster catchers are increasing. They've benefited a lot from fox control on some islands. They're called oyster catchers because they eat oysters and other large shellfish. They're the only wild animals that can open a, a big cockle or, a, or, or an oyster. In the middle of them, that's a Pacific gull. It's one of the world's biggest gulls. Lots of big gull species around the world have adapted very well to urbanisation and they're in cities and so on, but our Pacific gulls, they still seem to like natural areas where they forage for crabs and things like that. Well, that's very nice. A couple of Cape Barren geese have walked between us and the pied oyster catcher flock. The Cape Barren goose is a bird that's increasing again. It was hunted to dangerously low levels, but uh, it's been fairly safe on its breeding islands in Bass Strait for many years now. And populations are beginning to build up and we're getting migrants to the mainland in decent numbers again. still on Boralia Island and this is the sort of thing we were really looking for. These are shorebirds, migratory shorebirds. They've flown to Western Port Bay from many thousands of kilometres away. The bigger birds in these images are double-banded plovers. They've migrated from the braided riverbeds of the South Island of New Zealand and they come to Australia for the winter every year. So they started to arrive in February and March and they'll be with us until about September. The smaller birds that you have with them are redneck stints, and these are hardcore migrants. These have bred in foothill tundras in northern Siberia, so they've migrated 10 to 12,000 kilometres to join us in Australia. This is a winter survey, so most of the adult shorebirds are actually away in northern Siberia as we speak, but every year they come down, and the first year birds come down a little later than the adults, and then they don't migrate north with the adults. They haven't got the foraging skill to put on the huge amounts of fuel they need for a northwards migration. So they stay with us for a winter and they learn how to forage and they hang around in flocks in nice places like Boralia Island. It doesn't look very spectacular in imagery but this is the heart of Western Port Bay. These are very large tidal flats on Middle Spit. 
that's what drives the importance of the place for water birds in general. Shorebirds come out here and they feed on invertebrates in, in the mud, uh, things like crabs and worms and small bivalves, things like that. Black swans come out here in very large numbers to f graze on the seagrass. And when the tide's low, we can't really see these birds, but that's why they're in Western Port Bay. And when the tide is high, that's when we see them around the coastline in roosts and places where they're easier to watch. Our surveys highlighted the importance of the north arm of Western Port for waterbirds generally, and in particular for large wading birds, such as egrets, herons, ibis and spoonbills. For black swans, thousands of black swans are attracted to feed on the seagrass beds. And for migratory shorebirds, including some threatened species such as the eastern curlew, which occurred in significant numbers. This information helps to place the significance of Western Port Bay and its waterbird populations in the statewide context so that its significance can be taken into account in planning processes.